Hey there, Mr. Weaver here. This is Module 4, Lesson 3, Slope Intercept Form. After this lesson, you need to be able to rewrite linear equations in slope intercept form and graph and interpret linear functions. Let's learn writing linear equations in slope intercept form. An equation of the form y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y intercept, is written in slope intercept form. When an equation is not written in slope intercept form, it might be easier to rewrite it into slope intercept form before graphing it. An equation can be rewritten in slope intercept form by using those properties of equality that we learned back in module one and solving for y. Our key concept here then is slope intercept form. So slope intercept form, you're gonna hear it a lot. Y equals mx plus b. M stands for the slope, b stands for the y intercept. So in our example, we have y equals negative two x plus seven, m is negative 2, so the slope there is negative 2, and b is 7, so the y-intercept must be positive 7. Example 1. Write linear equations in slope-intercept form. Write an equation in slope-intercept form for the line with a slope of 4 sevenths and a y-intercept of 5. Write the equation in slope-intercept form. So slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. They tell us the slope is 4 sevenths. Slope is just m, so we're going to plug in 4 sevenths, where m was. And our y-intercept is 5. b stands for the y-intercept, so we plug it in where b is. If they give you a positive y-intercept, then you would make it positive of that number. If they give you a negative y-intercept, so if this was negative 3, then instead of plus, we would just make that a minus. But it just goes right at the end there. Then, here they said simplify it. We're just really squishing everything together. So y equals 4 sevenths x plus 5. Check your understanding. Write an equation for the line with a slope of negative 5 and a y-intercept of 12. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said y equals negative 5x plus 12. Slope was negative 5, that goes in for m. y-intercept is 12, that goes in for b. Example 2. Rewrite linear equations in slope-intercept form. Write negative 22x plus 8y equals 4 in slope-intercept form. This is not in slope-intercept form because it's not y equals something x plus something equals mx plus b. This is written in standard form. So we need to get y equals mx plus b, meaning we're solving for y. So y is here. We got to solve and get that by itself. First, let's add 22x to both sides. That cancels it off the left side. And... Now it appears on the right. Simplifying it, finally to get y by itself, you're just going to need to divide by 8, both sides. We end up with y equals 2.75x plus 0 0.5. Or if you wanted to keep it as fractions, we could have said 22 eighths or 11 fourths x plus 1 half. As you're going through this, to change standard form into slope-intercept form, it's going to really be the same two steps each time. You're going to either add or subtract the x's from both sides, and then divide by whatever is in front of y. This is now super helpful to do because now that it's in this form, I can see that my slope or rate of change is 2.75, and I know that my y-intercept is 0 0.5. Check your understanding. What's the slope-intercept form of negative 16x minus 4y equals negative 56? Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer you should have said y equals negative 4x plus 14. First, I would add 16x to both sides. Then I can rewrite, and I'm going to put this x out front, so 16x, because that's slope-intercept form, minus 56. Finally, dividing by negative 4 to everything. That's gone. y equals 16 divided by 4 is 4. There's a negative there, so it's negative with the x. Negative and negative make this positive. 56 divided by 4 is 14, which is what we get. Example 3, write linear equations. Our real context here is jobs. The number of job openings in the United States during a recent year increased by an average of 0 0.06 million per month since May. In May, there were about 4.61 million job openings in the United States. Write an equation in slope-intercept form to represent the number of job openings in the United States in the months since May. Use the given information to write an equation in slope-intercept form. So first, we're given that there were 4.61 million jobs in May. So if x is the months since May, 
And why is the number of job openings in millions? Then because the number of job openings is 4.61 million when x is equal to zero, so in May, then b, when we started, must be 4.61. We also are told that the number of job openings has increased, so that's what it's changing by, 0 0.06 million each month, which means that our slope or rate of change is 0 0.06. So our equation then would be y equals 0.06x plus 4.61. What it's changing by is m, where we started when x is 0, that's your y-intercept, so b. Check your understanding, read through the situation, and write an equation in slope-intercept form that represents the situation. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer you should have found your equation would be y equals 9x plus 183, where those numbers are actually in millions. It tells us that at the beginning, the first quarter of 2012, we start at 183, so that's our b, y-intercept is where you start, and it's increasing by 9, so that's what it's changing by, your m. Let's learn graphing linear functions in slope-intercept form. The slope-intercept form of a linear equation is y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. The variables m and b are called parameters of the equation because if we change either value, that will change what the graph looks like. A constant function is just a linear function in the form of y equals b. And we saw in a previous lesson that y equals b is just going to make a horizontal line. So constant functions where b is not equal to zero, they don't cross the x-axis, so they don't have an x-intercept. Those functions also have a slope of zero, meaning that the domain will be all real numbers, but the range is going to be b. Example four, graph linear functions in slope-intercept form. So graph a linear function with a slope of negative three over two and a y-intercept of four. Write the equation in slope-intercept form and graph the function. So first let's write our equation. It tells us the slope is negative three over two, so plug that in for m. The y-intercept is positive four, so we're going to put b as plus four. Our final equation is negative three over two x plus four. Now to graph this, we have all the information that we need. So first we're gonna plot a point at our y-intercept at plus four. So I put a dot four spaces up. Then our slope tells us how it is changing. So this would go down three over two. Since I use that negative for the top number, I have to not use it for the bottom because there's only one negative. Then I can put my dot in that next point. Now that I have two dots, I can just connect them with a line and put the arrows on the end to show it keeps going. There's my graph that has a slope of negative three halves and a y-intercept of four. Check your understanding. Graph a linear function with a slope of negative two and a y-intercept of seven. One quick hint, this slope is not written as a fraction, but we can easily rewrite it as a fraction over one. And that might help you when you're graphing. Pause the video now, complete the check. Check your answer. First, you should have plotted your dot at seven. Then it's going down two and over one. So here's our negative two, then our over one, our new dot. Draw the line through those two dots and you have your graph. One common mistake, if you were to just go down two and make your dot here, then it wouldn't have a slope of negative two anymore. It would be undefined. So it's not doing what it tells us. So be careful. If it's an integer, not a fraction, then just make it over one. So you don't only go up or down. Example six, graph constant functions. Graph y equals two. Write the equation in slope-intercept form and graph the function. So first, we have y equals two, which is really y equals zero x plus two. So our y-intercept is two. Then we know the slope is zero, so we're just gonna have a horizontal line. It goes through all coordinates of two, which we saw in previous lessons. Check your understanding. Graph y equals one. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have a horizontal line that is one unit high. One final check for understanding. Match each graph with its function. We're given six equations there. Which graph matches each? Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answers. First, y equals eight. So this should be a horizontal line eight units up, which is at D y equals negative four, horizontal line, four units down, which is what C shows. 
3x plus 7y equals negative 28. I would want to get this into slope intercept form. So I would want to have it as y equals negative 3 sevenths x minus 4. And I did that by subtracting 3x from both sides, dividing both sides by 7. Which one is showing that? Our y intercept is at negative 4. So either there or there. And we want a slope that's going down 3 over 7. Down 3 over 7, so f. E is going up 3 over 7, which we can see down here for E. For y minus 3x plus 8, y intercept is at positive 8. So you have a positive 8 there. This one down here is at negative 8, so not even going to work. And we can check, is our slope down 3 over 1? Yes, it is. So B for that one. And finally, our last one must be A. If we got it into slope intercept form, we would have y equals 3x minus 8, which is up here for A. And we've used all of them. Again, we can see how changing certain ones into slope-intercept form can help us figure out what the graph looks like.